This is Small Biz Florida, the podcast and broadcast. It's all things business across the state of Florida. And if you've been tuning in lately, you know that Small Biz Florida is back on the road again. We are at the 12th annual JMI, that's Jim Moran Institute, Small Business Leadership Conference. It's all taking place here in Orlando at the Lowe's Sapphire Falls Resort. And as I've said before, I really love and appreciate this conference because it truly is all about small business and all the resources and assistance programs that are available out there throughout the state for small business. Also, some incredibly powerful uh, speakers uh, that uh, that talk about um, issues that small business owners face and deal with every day. And we've got one of the standout uh, speakers and presenters with us right now, uh, Mr. Jay Owens, who is with Business Builders. He is the founder and the C- CEO of Business Builders. Uh, Jay, you were the keynote uh, for the morning here at the JMI conference. We appreciate the support of the conference and appreciate you taking out time here with us on Small Biz Florida. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. It was uh, great last year. I came out and did a workshop and then uh, today to do the keynote was a lot nice. of fun. It was it was a great presentation. Uh, I was in the the very back of the room because the room's kind of crowded. So uh, it was a great presentation. I'm I'm looking forward to to our conversation. Um, but let's start as we always do, Jay. Just a little bit of your background pathway uh, to creating a business builders. Yeah, you know, I was kind of the young entrepreneur. Uh, I don't know if it's in my blood. I don't know if that's a thing. But my uncle was an entrepreneur. So was my grandfather. And um, I just always wanted to kind of chart my own course, you know, and I think that's how a lot of folks feel who own businesses or want to or, or have that entrepreneurial attitude. It's just that desire to kind of create your own thing, something that is unique to your own desires. And I did that from a very young age and actually started the business that I run today when I was 17. So it's been a long journey, um, but it's been awesome. Yeah, you, you talked a little bit about the journey. Uh, I loved one of your comments about being patient. Mm. Uh, you know, being patient with the business, with the idea, and, uh, and you know, having perseverance and, and uh, you know, working with the business. And I, I, it was a great point to make. And because so many people, they get so often, they get impatient with that new idea. Sometimes it takes time. Yeah, I mean, everybody's heard the story of the tortoise and the hare, you know, and uh, we know how that story ends. Right. And it's the slow and steady wins the race. We are in a culture where everything is now, now, now. Right. And at the end of the day, sometimes just stepping back, taking a deep breath and getting a little perspective and just doing the next right thing. That's what I always say. Just do the next right thing. Be a little better than you were last year and you'll keep growing. Now, Business Builders is a marketing agency. The model of your business is you are a consultant, you work with small business owners, you engage with them to help them create marketing strategies, digital marketing strategies, uh, traditional marketing strategies. Talk a little bit about Business Builders and and, and your business model and what what you bring to the table uh, for small business owners. Sure. I always say that marketing can be confusing and expensive. Uh, A lot of people waste a lot of time and money on things that don't work. And so we want to help create clear, effective messages so that people can get attention and acquire customers. Because at the like end of the it. day, if your marketing's not helping you do that, it's problematic. So we do that three ways. We help people plan things. We get their messaging right. We produce things like websites and videos. And then we promote them through social media and paid ads and all those kind of things and get their inf- get their message in front of their prospect so that they can grow their business. I like it, Jay. You just took an entire 16-week semester marketing class <laughs> and broke it down into five minutes. I love it. Uh, so uh, I got to tell you, what's interesting uh, with our work in, at the SBDC, Small Business Development Center, is most of the time when a, when a client walks in and they say, I'm here to meet with the SBDC and talk about my business, uh, you know, nine times out of 10, the first thing they walk in and say is, I need more marketing. Yeah. <laughs> and so kind of speak to that. Yeah. You know, Jay, is, is it really about marketing or are there other things that really just start with? Well, you know, my uncle always told me the best way to grow a business is just do a great job for them and ask them to tell somebody else. You'll never run out of business. And so that's turned out to be true. In fact, sometimes people will come to us and say, well, we don't need marketing because we get all of our business through referrals. And I say, well, that's great. But when somebody tells uh, a friend they should work with you, what do they do? They likely look you up on the internet. They Google you. They see what they see out there. And, And the question is, does your marketing collateral and material make people 
more likely to buy from you or less. There is no neutral. It's always a positive influence or a negative influence. And, and the question is, what is, what is happening? And the, a lot of times in marketing, people get so caught up in buzzwords like SEO and PPC and social media and all these things, and they miss the fundamentals. And that's why we always start with the messaging. At the end of the day, if you're not telling the right story, which right. we say is inviting the customer into the story, then everything else is going to be not necessarily totally ineffective, but it is going to be less valuable, and you're going to waste a lot more money than you would otherwise. So uh, we, we call it a marketing blueprint that we start with because it's like it's like going to an architect. You wouldn't build a house without having a blueprint. You shouldn't do a marketing plan without one either. And right. that's a lot of what the SBDC does too as well, which is help people get the right plan in place because you don't right. want to just be out there slinging mud against the wall. There's too many ways for you right. to burn your money. And we don't want you to do that. To go uh, kind of drill down a little deeper into that concept of telling the story. Yeah. What is all, what's that all about for that small business owner? For sure. Uh, we use a framework called Story Brand. It was developed by a guy named Donald Miller with a book called Building a Story Brand. And we uh, have been certified in this framework to help people craft a message in a way that invites the customer in. So there's seven parts to this framework. I'll give them to you real quickly. The customer, what do they want? They're the beginning of the story, not your business. Right. What does the customer want? What problem do they have? That's number two. You're the guide. That's number three. You give them a clear plan. That's number four. Number five, you call them to action. Number six, you help them avoid failure. And number seven, you show them what success looks like. When, you, when we create a messaging plan, we put all of that on a one-page sheet of paper as with as few words as possible. And when that happens, two things happen. One, internal teams become very aware of what they're, what they're doing, what problem they're solving, and they become more effective. And then externally, people that may refer business to you, like when people say, hey, we get most of our business from referrals, I'm like, great. But the problem is a lot of people don't even know exactly what you do. And if you can clarify your message, uh, it will help people who already refer you, refer you better. And right. so that's why we start there with that foundation. We craft that story brand messaging to begin with. And when we do that, the next steps of building a website, creating videos, running social media campaigns, sending out emails, all that kind of stuff becomes exponentially more valuable. In fact, when we implemented this own framework for ourselves on our existing website, it's probably seven or eight years ago, we doubled our incoming leads wow. the following month just by improving the messaging. That's how much it matters. So, you know... You are an expert. You have presented here at JMI. Uh, you are the specialist um, in this in this whole marketing space. Is are we down to digital and social media? Is that what's left? Are the traditional uh, channels, uh, radio, television, print, are they really? Is it is it really over? Great question. <laughs> is traditional advertising dead? No. In fact, now, you know, I'm a little biased to the digital side because we spend more time there, but we have clients where we'll help with things because in certain environments, a billboard's the right way to go, you know? Uh, a few years ago, I took my kids on an RV trip around the whole country, and we were driving down this one interstate, and there was this big billboard for this creamery out west. It was like in Montana. They sold ice cream and cheese and all this kind of stuff, and it looked delicious. And I wouldn't have stopped there hadn't been for that billboard. So there's no question traditional media still has a place. The question is... Do we have a way to track it? Is it priced correctly? Right. Are we overpaying? Those are things we have to pay attention to. Right. And so that's why people need to have an expert on their side to guide them so that they're not just throwing money at TV, radio, billboard, right. social media. You can burn as much money just as fast on Google or on Facebook as you can on a billboard or a radio commercial. Doesn't mean one is right or wrong. You have to determine that for your business, for your area, and that's where having some expert counsel can really help. And to the social digital media, is it absolutely critical? I mean, I, I guess we think it is at the SBDC, but is it absolutely critical that uh, entrepreneurs and small business owners, they've got to at least understand the basics of, of getting engaged in social media if they're going to launch a business or grow their existing business? Yeah, the thing I would say that's most important about social media is to remember th this. It is social media. The mistake people make is they go on there and they start going, buy from me, buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. And I'm like, if I showed up at an event like this, you know, small business leadership conference we're at today, and all I did was walk around the room and ask people to buy from me, it would not go very well. Right. I would not close very many deals. But if instead I walked around and said, hey, tell me who you are. What do you do? What, what do you love about what you do? What, what's your passion? If I start asking questions like that and engaging other people, right. 
It's the same with social media. So one of the biggest mistakes people make is they think, man, I got to create all this content. And I got to post all this stuff. I mean, yes, we're doing that right now. We're creating content, which we'll use on all kinds of things. But ultimately, sometimes the best thing you can do, especially right now, is go onto LinkedIn, find people who may be good perspective prospects for you, and go be the best commenter on their stuff. Say nice things to them publicly. They'll like it because everybody does. Right. No, say nice things, Jay. <laughs> That's right. I know. How, it's crazy. You are innovative, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up, too. I, I love that concept because I had the opportunity to teach a couple of times uh, intro to marketing, one of my favorite classes to teach. And I used to tell the students that there's 16 chapters in this book on all different kinds of, of, you know, marketing techniques and tools and strategies. But there was one common theme that I felt like ran, one common thread that ran through every one of those chapters, and it was about relationships. Mm. Talk, talk about relationships. How yeah. important is that to a small business owner? I mean, that's what business is about. Business is about relationships, about who you know, and it's about helping other people. And whatever your product or service is, I always say sales should be easy. In fact, I think if you have a product or a service that's going to help somebody else, I think you're morally obligated to convince them to buy it because it's going to help them. And so at the end of the day, the relationships that we build with colleagues, um, referral partners, other businesses, clients, team members, that's what it's all about because as human beings, we're made for community. We're made to be around each other. We, we found that out more than ever in 2020, right. you know, and, and now we really... I hope, have a greater appreciation and value for that, whether it's in digital spaces online or physically in person at conferences like this. Nice. You know, I had, um, we had a guest on earlier that, you know, something that obviously I, I knew about, uh, the small business that I, I owned and operated at one time was a sales-based organization. We, we sold products. Um, and of course, I understood the importance of leads, but... Um, you know, I just, uh, it's been a while since I thought about that concept of leads. You mentioned it a little earlier. Um, but but how important are leads to that small business owner and operator? And should there, with the technology the way it is today, there are probably extremely easy, there's probably new technologies that would allow a small business owner to really go out there and maybe generate leads, drive more traffic to that website. How important is that to, to small business? I mean, it's extremely important. It's the lifeblood of business. You know, if you, I would say it's like juggling money. You have to have a certain number of leads in your pipeline, right. a certain number that are receivables that have promised to pay you money but haven't yet, and a certain amount that are cash. And it's really just a funnel. A lot of people have seen like a traditional right. marketing funnel. At the very top are strangers, people who don't know who you are. And then they become uh, visitors. Maybe they're, they're visiting your website, but you don't know who they are yet. So they're not prospects because you, you don't have their information. You give them something of value. Maybe you collect their email address. And now they become a prospect because you know who they are. And now you can follow up with them. Most sales aren't made because people don't follow up enough. Now, you follow up, now they can become a customer. And so it's going to trickle down all the way across that. The, everybody's a stranger. Then a handful of people are visitors, a smaller amount become prospects, and an even smaller amount become customers, and an even smaller amount remain customers over time. Mm -hmm. So as long as you think about, you need to keep filling that funnel back up at the top so that you, know, you can last the test of time. And we've done that consistently now for 24 years. And I, I, you know, again, in your presentation, you, you talked about the juggling of, of dollars, I believe. Yeah. And I, I love the fact that you highlighted pipeline. Mm -hmm. it, it is so important. And a lot of small business owners, and I think you may have even said that, don't really understand that concept of pipeline. I mean, you've got to have the pipeline to, to get people some to close at right. the end of the day. It, it, you, pipeline's got to be big because not everyone, as you state, is going to become a, a, you know, an end user. Right. Basically. And, and I would say, too, like sometimes people will say, to me, well, we we close every deal that comes in. Then I'm like, oh, your prices probably aren't high enough. Then, <laughs> right. Like if you don't have somebody telling, you no, then you're missing right. a ton of opportunity, right. um, either in pricing or in market. Um, but the pipeline idea is simply that you have to have enough people who at some day will give you money. Um, because that's how you stay in business. Right. You got to have enough cash. I always say, like, it's, it's certainly people over profits. But if you don't have profits, you can't keep people around. Right. And I guess uh, kind of one final technical question: uh, customer relationship management software (CRMs). Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, a lot of small business owners 
feel like, well, you know, I can't afford that. It's, it's not something I need right now. But but how important are CRMs? Uh, it's really, everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to you have to start building your own list. I always say like things like Facebook followers or likes online. That's all rented or leased property. When you have an email list, it's owned property. We want to own property. And so having a good CRM, we use HubSpot, which we love. We're a HubSpot certified partner. It's an incredible tool. And back in the day, they do have some very expensive options, but they actually have a lot of free options now too. So you can get started on a free platform that gives you access to hundreds or maybe in some cases a couple of thousand contacts before you have to start paying for it. And if you if you can't keep track of who's coming in, you know, back in the day I used to keep track of everything just in my email inbox. Right. And that it's fine for a while, but it Jay, comes real chaos over you're time. You're a young guy. That, yeah, back in my day, we kept things a in a Rolodex. Yeah, I know. I never had a Rolodex, to be fair. Right. I have um, seen them, though. I've seen yeah, them. You've seen them? Yes. yes. In a museum, something like that. The Museum of Marketing, the That's old right. Rolodex. Uh, so business builders, let's, let's, let's talk about se- selling right now, uh, Jay. This is your opportunity to sell. Uh, business builders, what's the model? How do you help a small business? You, you engage, you can engage anyone across the country, I'm sure. Sure. Via technology now. Don't need to be in front of them, I guess. That's right. Um, and uh, you're willing to talk to small businesses about their marketing strategies? How does it all work with business builders? Yeah, so back in the day, people would come to me and they'd say, hey, Jay, I want to build a website. And I'd say, great, what do you want to put on it? And they'd say, well, here's our mission statement and our logo and some of our photos. And we'd take that and turn it into a website. And it was okay. It was better than what they had. And it was the best we could do. But now we approach it very differently. They'll come to us and they'll say, we want a website. Or they'll say, we want SEO or PPC. A lot of times they don't even know what they're asking for. Right. But ultimately, what they want is to grow their business. And that's our job, is to help them grow their business. We always start at the same place now, which we didn't used to. Where we start now is with that marketing blueprint that I talked about. We'll spend anywhere from two to six hours with a client in a private workshop setting, and we'll help extract information to learn who it is they serve, what problem they're solving, and we'll help craft that story. Then we'll put together a clear plan so that they're actually spending time and money on things that are going to work versus what we used to do is somebody would call us and we just send them a quote. Well, how am right. I supposed to send you a quote if I don't? Every business is unique. Right. Every, every business is, is um, in a different area. And so we do that blueprint to begin with as a fixed priced one-time engagement. And it's great for everybody because they leave with a clear plan, whether they use us for everything else or not. Right. Nice. How does one find business builders? The best way to find us is online. You can just go to businessbuilders.agency. It'll take you right there. So instead of doing .com, you do .agency, all these new fangled things these days. So businessbuilders.agency. All of our information is online. You can request a free uh, consultation. We'll kind of look at what you've got going on, see if we can give you some suggestions. And if we're not the best fit to help, which many times we're not, uh, we'll help direct you in the right place to go because you know I know everybody can't afford an agency, and that's okay. I love helping people at all stages of business so that we can help direct them and then and maybe one day they'll be able to work with us. Nice. And I know it doesn't matter physically where you're located, but where are you physically located? We're in St. Augustine, nice. Florida, the Great oldest city in the country. It's beautiful yeah. right on the coast. But we serve clients all over the country and all yeah. over the world. Nice. Uh, it is Jay Owen, CEO and founder of Business Builders Agency, a um, innovative um, marketing firm. Where were you, Jay, when I was in business? <laughs> oh, that's right. You were uh, you were a young kid. <laughs> uh, Jay, thank you for your time. Thank you for your support of the JMI uh, Small Business uh, Leadership Conference. Uh, you did a great job this morning with the keynote. I know uh, everyone enjoyed it and uh, a lot of valuable information in there. Thank My you. pleasure. Yep. This is Small Biz Florida. I am Tom Kindred, your host, and uh, it is all things business here at the uh, JMI Small Business Leadership Conference. It's all taking place here in Orlando. Uh, Stay tuned. A lot more to come from the conference. This is Small Biz Florida.